There's a lot of ways to make a raincoat, and I decided since I didn't need one to withstand heavy rain, I thought I'd make one out of the comfiest fabrics, the ones that I love the most, and then seal it with otter wax. Hi, I'm Sarami, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use otter wax and share some tips and tricks on what I did. I'm going to use, show, you, show you the tools that I use. I'm going to show you actually the application of it. I used both the bar and the fabric dressing. And I'll share also what I would do differently if I were to do this again. And at the end, you're going to see it get the ultimate test with the sprinklers. So otter wax is a way to seal natural fibers in a waterproof coating or a weatherproof coating. They kind of say both on their website. And you can see it used on things like um, cottons and wools and things like that. Uh, definitely you gotta stick to natural fibers. And they have other products that you can use on leather, like boots and things like that. But you can use otter wax on something that you've made or something that you purchased. So say you have a vest or an apron that you want to waterproof, otter wax is a really great solution. If you want something that you can do yourself, and it's um, a natural fiber that you're applying it to. So you can see here that this is my jacket that I made and the wax really shows up on camera so it looks a lot better in person. I'll just say that right off the bat. So one of my first tips is if you want something to look really great in photos or you don't want the wax to show up, I'd use something that's more in line with the color of the wax or just a lighter color in general. A lot of um, applications make the fabric look darker and, and this one, since my fabric was so dark, it made my fabric look lighter. So it's kind of one of those things that you might want to test it out on a scrap piece of fabric. I used both the bar and the dressing on this one project. It is the same product so you can use them interchangeably and I consulted with Auto Wax before I did that because I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to make any mistakes. I used the bar primarily on the body and most of the hood and then I got the fabric dressing which is the meltable form and applied that on the sleeves which I'll show you here in the video. When I first got the bar of wax, I immediately tried it out on a test piece of fabric. I really wanted to see like how waterproof is this gonna be. I was pretty nervous. And the one thing I did to prepare my fabric was just to pre-wash it. And I only pre-washed my outer fabric, the one I was going to apply the wax to. And I highly recommend you do that because you want to remove any finishes on there. And I also wanted my fabric to be as shrunk and dense as possible since this linen was fairly open weave and lightweight. So you can see here that this has been sitting in my little tool caddy for, for about eight months and I waxed this eight months ago and it definitely feels drier than my current state of my jacket since I've still been kind of touching this up and it didn't take me eight months to wax my jacket because I finished it eight months ago, but I really wasn't motivated over the summer to do it. So I've just been kind of chipping away at it here and there. You know, it was really hot outside, so I didn't really want to spend time doing it outside with the fabric dressing. So I just waited till a good moment. And the texture of it after it's been sitting for eight months is really, it's more dry and papery and it feels more akin to what you'd expect from a waxed fabric if you've ever seen those before. This one's a little tacky and it'll probably make the surface of my table here feel like I'll be able to feel a little bit once I remove the jacket. Not bad, but it's just something to note that it's just not really at that cured stage yet. You can use this within a couple days of applying it, but over time it definitely does dry out a little bit better and feels nicer. So I immediately applied it to the fabric and kind of see that I didn't go all the way to the edges. I just kind of stuck to the middle. And um, I've really been scrunching on this and I've recorded this video a few times, but it'll still beat off the water really easily. You can see it just kind of rolls right on off the fabric and uh, there's no fabric or water transferring through the wax either. Eventually you'd probably feel along these edges but one of the great things about otter wax is that you can reapply it once um, maybe you uh, go through a season or maybe you wear a bag with a strap over your shoulder and the strap's kind of rubbing it off. Uh, you could reapply it, which is kind of one of the pros of this uh, application. 
I'm going to share some of the tools that I use and found most helpful and then show you kind of the application of it using the bar and the fabric dressing. So I tended to use only the paddle and the brush when using the bar. So when I use the bar, you basically are rubbing it onto the fabric. So the bar applies really easily. It's um, firm and smooth to the touch and it goes onto the fabric really easily. Uh, and then you can use a paddle to kind of press it in. So one of the things you need to do with the wax is you need to press it into the fibers and that way you get a good seal. So with uh, the application of this, I fully lined my jacket because I was thinking, well, if I'm pressing a lot of wax through, I definitely don't want this against my skin. I wasn't really sure what to expect. And I'm really glad I lined it because with the fabric dressing, definitely I could apply a lot more wax. I don't, I still don't think it went through the fabric though. It just was something that I thought I'd consider because this fabric is kind of porous. So you just start rubbing the bar onto the fabric and um, I really focused on all of the seams and pressed it in there really good. So that is one thing you need to think about with your design and that's another tip I'd share is this design isn't really set up for this jacket to be a raincoat. Yes, there's a, you know, this lining expansion pack, a lot of raincoats aren't lined. So that's another clue that this isn't the probably the most ideal pattern to make a raincoat from. But like I said, I needed a really light duty jacket. It doesn't rain a lot here. And I thought, hey, I'm gonna go for comfort. I've had those techie outerwear raincoats and um, now I'm going for something soft and I love a good experiment. So, so this is, a, it can be pretty tedious, but it is pretty satisfying and enjoyable. Um, with the bar, you could actually just sit in front of the TV or bring it places and do it. It does have a slight smell to it, but it's not a bad smell. It's definitely something you'd be like, what is that? It doesn't quite smell like wax. Um, it's kind of got a mineral smell to it. I don't, I don't really know how to describe it. I've been trying to figure out how I would describe the smell of it since I, I uh, first smelled it. Um, but like I said, it's not bad. It's definitely distinctive. And I know, um, like I, I can walk by my jacket and I can kind of get a smell. And it's probably because I'm really sensitive to it because I know that's what that is. So that is something to think about. Uh, but like if you're going to sit there and, and do this in the car when you're waiting for your kid to come from a game or something, or um, maybe you're just, you know, chipping away at it, I think that's totally doable. Uh, having a firm surface really helps. Um, and I, like I said, I use this paddle a lot. They sell a paddle on the website. And so if you don't have access, this is a dish scraper. So I had these two dish scrapers and one was still brand new. I hadn't even used it yet. So I was like, this is perfect. This looks just like the paddle on their website. So I can't really stress this enough that you really wanna have the paddle or the brush, which you'll see later in the video, because I didn't get the brush until I got the fabric dressing. And that brush is so dynamite. It's just a natural bristle brush and it really gets the wax into the crevices. And when you're using the fabric dressing, you're putting on a lot more. It's really hard to get kind of a, a thin layer with it, which is great because you can cover a lot more surface fast with it, but it does make it go so fast that you got to kind of keep up with it and having the paddle and the brush were key. Um, and they're not expensive, so I would highly recommend it. The whole project is not very expensive if you're going to waterproof a jacket. The bar probably would have done my whole jacket, but I applied a lot of it initially because I wasn't sure how much and I ran out. So I got really close to running out. And so when I contacted them and asked if I can use the fabric dressing in conjunction um, and found out I could, I jumped on that and you'll see that later in the video. So definitely pick up the paddle or something to press it into a nice smooth piece of wood. So, or maybe even like a dough scraper, a plastic dough scraper might work. Uh, something that you can press it in because you even if you use your fingers, your fingers are gonna get really tired, so you'll want it. And plus, the brush is really great for the seams and, and nooks and crannies of whatever you're, you're waxing. All right, so with the fabric dressing, it comes in a little tin, and you need to remove the outer wrapper before you start melting it, because you need to submerge it into water. You're gonna pop the lid off, and then you're going to have some water ready in a pan. And I recommend, if you can, having a pan that you don't mind um, 
not having to clean right away, uh, like, or just be really, really careful because obviously wax can be kind of tricky to clean up. And I didn't really think that through. I just thought, oh, I'll be careful. And, and it wasn't bad, but if you have some like pan laying around that you use for craft projects or something, I would recommend using that. Just some, just a gentle reminder. So yeah, so it's a hard cake in there. So yeah, I just put it directly in the pan of water and I didn't use a double boiler, which means I would have it in a separate container so it's not touching the bottom of the pan. And I just started it really slowly and just to see how it would go. The water started simmering and I used a chopstick to kind of break it up. That's another tip I have for you or a tool. Um, I recommend just having a chopstick. That way you can kind of, you know, test it out and you don't have to worry about cleaning it too, too much because I think uh, cleaning wax off a spoon would be pretty tricky. <laughs> It takes a little while. I mean, you know, we're talking like 10 minutes. Um, and like I said, I really watched it. I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to overdo it. Once it gets fully melted, you're ready to go. And it will start hardening up as it cools off. So you kind of need to be ready to go. So I set up an area on my porch and did this outside and I protected the table with a couple of old towels. And here's my other tip, use a lint roller, otherwise you might miss some hairs and you might seal them in there. They can, you can still pull them out, but I think it's just the less fussy it is, the easier overall. So I say use a lint roller or you can use some tape or something wrapped around your hand. That works great too. All right, so I just, brought the whole shebang out there and you can still you can see there's a little bit of wax around the edge of my pan even though I was really careful the um it does kind of just you know it's in the air so I definitely used an older brush definitely make sure that your brush isn't going to be affected by putting being put into something really hot like the wax you definitely wouldn't want to be melting your brush and smearing it across your garment <laughs> so it goes pretty quick like you can put a lot on pretty fast and that is one thing you need to consider is that you kind of need to be really set up and then you just keep pressing it in you can see I have more wax in, in some areas than others and that's no big deal like it doesn't it all evens out eventually. You really can work it in with the paddle and the brush, which you'll see soon. Um, this isn't the brush I'm talking about with working it into the garment. It's a little, it's more, it looks more like a toothbrush, a wooden toothbrush. So you can cover a lot. Like I've already put a pretty thick coating in this amount of area. So, so you just can work it into the seams and work it into the jacket. And you can see the, how, um, light colored it is that none of that has been worked into the jacket and so that's a good indication you can see where it needs to be pushed in and then yeah the little brush I just sat there and worked it in and it was so great for around uh, snaps and things like that which you'll see this is a great project to listen to an audiobook <laughs> it does take a bit uh, but yeah you, you can see a really close-up view my wax just goes right on there. My brush gets really gunked up. So maybe if you had a couple brushes that might, you might find that uh, nice to have. And then here's the little brush I use to kind of work it into the garment and really get it in there. And uh, you know, I'm still kind of getting the hang of it at this point. Um, it didn't do the inside of my sleeve hems or the bottom or even in the inside of my flaps. And you, you know, I think I talk a lot about that in the, the sewing and prep for this project because I definitely know a lot about waterproof breathable garments and I worked in the outerwear industry designing and doing pattern drafting for them. So this is, when I say that this was a completely different way to do this, it really was for me because I'm used to really um, high-end waterproof breathable fabrics that you use a seam seal machine for. So. You know, you wouldn't see snaps like this on a jacket like a waterproof jacket without being able to be seam sealed on the back. So this isn't a really good, <laughs> good raincoat. Um, you know, this isn't, this isn't like the ideal way to do a raincoat, but I'm thrilled with it. So I'm pretty excited about it. And you can see, look at how good this brush works. That, that was a lot of wax that I just pressed in there. <laughs> And it was great to get it around there. So do I think if I, you know, put a ton of water on that snap, would it get through the jacket? I do. Um, it's not going to be waterproof. But like I said, it is a light duty application. And where the snaps are, that's a flap. And so the flap is going to also prevent some water from going in there. 
So that snap right there isn't really the weak part. It's the cap snap, the other side of it. And I can re get really nerdy about all this kind of stuff because it's really interesting to me and I worked um, in that industry. So you can do, there's a lot of different ways to waterproof a jacket. And I did another raincoat this year where I used waterproof fabric that was impregnated with a waterproof probably chemical or something. And then I used a thread that was hydrophilic so or hydrophobic, so it um, you know prevented as much water from transferring through each stitch as possible that I got from Sale Right. And that's the men's utility jacket if you want to check that out, especially those beginning videos or the first few videos, I really talk about the thread and how I set it up and in my machine and, and experiments and I show the water going on and everything. So um, these were both unconventional raincoats for me and my husband because we both came from that industry and we, we both have had really technical jackets. So this is the hood and I worked really hard on the hood and the fit of the hood was really important. That's something I did. So that's another tip I would say is your pattern selection if you're going to sew something or the garment. Having something that fits you really well is really going to be the best for preventing any water transfer and um, making sure that you stay dry. So you can see I really caked it on on the hood and really focused on those seams because that is a, you know, it's right at the top of the head and so the water theoretically is hitting there first. I also removed the shoulder seams of this jacket so that prevented one seam at the top. But there is a lot of things you can do to make a garment set up better for, um, minimal water getting into the garment and you can remove a lot of seams because but then the garment gets a little less comfortable and I like I said I wanted something that was really comfortable and this jacket fits me so well and it's so comfortable I love it so some of the uh, pros and cons about using the otter wax um, what's great about otter wax is that you can use it on any natural fiber and that kind of opens up the world of fabrics if you're looking to make yourself a raincoat because let's face it there's not a lot of raincoat fabrics out there there are but sometimes you're like mm, I don't really want that or I want it to be breathable so it doesn't feel like I'm wearing a trash bag and I get all sweaty in there or it's really not even sweat it's just um, uh, just the water you know the humidity it's just the humidity in your jacket uh, so you know comfort is obviously something really important it's not very cold here so even when it rains it can be kind of on the warm side look at all that wax I put on there see my wax is getting more solid now because the it's been cooling off but it really presses in <laughs> it goes in really good and I really wanted to make sure those seams and this was already an area of the jacket that I had used the bar on so this is um, just me kind of touching it up with the fabric dressing so some of the other pros about using the otter wax would be that you could um, buy a store-bought you know item and maybe make it waterproof or weatherproof hats aprons you know jackets vests things like that pants sometimes people will just do the tops of their thighs because maybe they sit in a canoe and they just want a little bit of a splash resistance there or they just do the top part portion of their jacket and just to kind of you know aid in some water repellency so there's some really clever uses for it the you know and then this also makes it so that you're wearing a breathable garment which I can't talk highly enough about um, it really makes a big difference in your comfort level when you're out in the elements and you know this fabrics against your skin so there's also that comfort level too it's a little warmer to put on it's not cold like some of those synthetics can be so some of the cons uh, when I was first starting out I definitely was overdoing it with the bar and um, that ended up being fine and now that I've been kind of sitting with this project for a while I actually think I might overdo it a little bit more but initially I felt like I was overdoing it because I wasn't confident about how much I should apply and the fat fabric dressing really made me go heck I'm going for it you know so you know did I really overdo it I don't think so but I think a large bar would work from almost any project it just didn't for mine because I like I said I overdid it a little bit uh, some of the other cons about the otter wax specifically are it does make the fabric a little tacky to the touch so it can attract lint and dog hair and there's a lot of that in my life about of, of all that so that is one detractor uh, that you might want to consider I'm definitely gonna have to hang this in a specific spot in my house it's not for in my opinion this isn't gonna be something for really heavy-duty um, rain or you know climate that is wet um, 
you might find it's actually pretty sufficient in most places. I would live in Portland, Oregon with this jacket, but you know, do I think it's the most ideal if I was really out in the elements and I had nothing to protect myself, like an overhang occasionally to run under? I don't know. I, I we'll see after I've worn it after a season. Come and ask me then. <laughs> I think the last con I would say is how visible it is on the dark fabric. Like here it looks really nice um, and that is more like how it looks in real life. So like I say, if you wanted to live its best Instagram life, you might want to pick a lighter color fabric to put it on because it does, like when you see it on like a, a you know, brown canvas, it makes it look a little bit like brown leather once you've applied it. It kind of changes it that drastically. And you can check out their Instagram feed. Their Instagram feed is definitely a beautiful feed of pictures of a beautiful lifestyle. Um, so this is a very, very different um, look for a lot of, from a lot of their posts. And a little bit more probably realistic for some folks, but you know, we'll see. <laughs> So if you are looking for other waterproofing ideas, uh, some of the things I could suggest is buying an already waterproof fabric and then using a thread that can kind of prevent um, the transference of water in your stitches. I think that that would be a pretty affordable way to go as well and it gives you a lot of flexibility. I still don't think that that's going to give you a jacket that is 100% waterproof in most in any situation. So, but it does make it very easy to make because you're not using a fabric that's as fiddly as some of those waterproof fabrics. I also feel like that fabric's probably a little bit more forgiving if you accidentally have a row of needle holes because you removed a seam and you have to re-sew it. And whereas most waterproof fabrics are not very forgiving that way. So that's something to think about. I know that people will say, but you can buy fabrics and seam seal them at home. Um, in, in my experience, those don't work as well. And I think I'm probably just a little bit um, jaded from working in a factory where we had the seam sealing machines and I knew what it took. And a home iron isn't the same thing, but iron, home iron and the accessibility of irons to be a certain temperature have changed. So maybe there are products that are working better for waterproof setup. Uh, I would definitely research it really well because even if you can apply the seam tape, you don't want it to delaminate after one season of wearing it, and that is usually what happens. Uh, or worse, and not even make your seams waterproof. <laughs> because you don't really want these tape to uh, prevent the water from getting into the jacket and it still fill up that channel where the tape is with water. You know, you don't want that either. So there's lots of things to think about. And a lot of those off-brand, I don't want to say off-brand, that's not really the right word, uh, but some of those lesser known brands of waterproof fabrics, they aren't as tested and they don't work as well in really extreme situations. So it's just something to think about. The other thing you could do is get a waxed canvas. I think waxed canvases can be kind of tricky to sew. They're pretty heavy duty, but I think it's totally worth a shot. And then you can actually probably use something like the Otter Wax to just kind of fix the, some of the seams that you put needle holes in, but just even pushing them together is going to make that wax kind of hold the seam together. You might get some good luck with that. I don't know how comfortable that jacket would be, but it might be a really good experiment. So. So just a little bit about the jacket design that I used. This is the Kelly Anorak with the expansion lining expansion pack by Closet Core Patterns. Um, and I didn't really modify it a whole lot. I did make it fit me really, really well. The hood was quite large, so I made that fit me really good because that's better for being a raincoat. Um, I made these flat pockets, the hand flat pockets on the front. Um, functional where they were actually a fake pocket. So I made those functional and some, you know, like I say, I don't really think that this is set up to be a raincoat per se, but you could just make this out of a waterproof fabric and the waterproof thread. You'd probably have a pretty solid waterproof jacket and it would be a lot less fussy than adding all the wax. Uh, and, and so there is that. You're just limited to the number of waterproof fabrics you can find that are impregnated with that kind of um, waterproof coating. That's not a three layer. I'm talking about fabrics that aren't a laminated three layer, two or three layer fabric, which means that they've been you know, it's two synthetic fabrics that are laminated together. You kind of know what I'm talking about. They usually are, um, you know, very plasticky. <laughs> they're not very plasticky, but they're definitely not going to be like a fabric. And some of those waterproof fabrics just feel like a polyester, which is a lot more comfortable than some of those raincoat fabrics are. 
Yeah, and a couple of the other details, you know, like adding all these snaps, um, all the seams, um, you know, the, the fact that it's lined with cotton, you know, definitely not ideal raincoat uh, setup, but it's going to be really comfortable and it's light duty. All right, so it's time to put it to the test. So I put the sprinkler up, got my husband out there with the camera, and it, it was a hot day, but it, the water was cold. <laughs> and this is probably more heavy duty water than my jacket will ever see. It, it doesn't rain sideways where I live and it doesn't rain so densely. So this is a good test. And I felt, I felt like I stayed dry except for getting sprayed in the face a little bit. My hood kept me dry and the only place I felt moisture was on my right elbow and so that is one area that I need to touch up. But the fact that I have a stitched draw cord on the front and these flat pockets, I felt inside the pockets and they felt dry as well. So two thumbs up, I'm pretty happy with that. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed my video on how to wax a jacket or other item with using Otter Wax, the bar, or the fabric dressing. Let me know how your project goes. I'm really eager to hear. And my advice, don't start right before rain season because you'll feel a lot of pressure. This is one, one gift I gave to myself was that I started this at the kind of the middle of our rainy season here because I told myself this doesn't have to be ready for our rainy season. And then that way it kind of gave me a few months to kind of, you know, get it waxed and get it done and then even make a video about it. So happy sewing, happy waxing, stay dry, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.